Hello, welcome to another Valley Forged. This is going to be one of my longer videos because there's a lot to talk about when it comes to CO2 versus diode lasers. And it's not just about price. There's a lot that comes with it. I mean, look at this 150 watt, my dream machine right here for $9,000. And uh, the only, one of the reasons I don't have it is because I don't have the space here. Uh, but eventually this will be the machine that I go for. Uh, you can do pretty much anything, but just look how much room this is going to take. And out the door, you're pretty much looking at over $10,000 for a full setup. So let's go back to the beginning then and talk about the differences between CO2 and a diode laser. I'm first going to give you a little technical overview. I'm not going to spend too much time on the technical, but I think we should all understand just the basic difference between the two lasers. So listen to this real quick. I guess it, from my perspective, it's, we, you can go really technical, but in a, in a nutshell, um, one uh, CO2 laser is a tube full of gas um, and very high voltages ignite, cause the gas to fluoresce and produce a laser. Mm -hmm. um, a a, a diode laser is like a component. It's like a solid state component. It's got little piece of material in it, a special um, compound. You apply electricity to it and it produces uh, a laser beam. So they both produce beams of light. One uses a, a gas, one uses a solid state component. They're, they're, they're basically the difference um, between them te yeah. technically. Um, they produce light at different wavelengths. All light has a certain wavelength. So when you see uh, something blue, it's a certain wavelength. When you see something red, it's a certain wavelength. Um, diode lasers generally, generally, when we're talking about them for our stuff, work in the visible spectrum. So they're a blue laser. For example, it's one of the most common ones, whereas CO2 lasers are invisible to the naked eye because they're infrared. They work in a different frequency. And because of these differences in terms of frequency, um, they affect materials differently. All right. So now that we got a little bit of the science out of the way, we're going to talk about why that matters. Like, okay, I'm, I, I hear this technical stuff of the differences, the lasers, why does that matter? Well, the short answer is it, the diode laser is going to be much cheaper. You're going to be able to use it a lot longer at the cheaper levels. You're probably going to get a lar much larger bed size for the price. The downside is diode lasers just don't cut that well. I mean, even if you get the max right now, which is a 20 basically a 20 to 24 watt diode laser, it's still not going to cut nearly as well as a CO2. And you're probably not going to do very well using acrylic. And this is something that a CO2 laser does quite well. Downside of the CO2 laser, of course, it's gonna, you're going to spend a lot more money. Uh, it's going to take up a lot more room generally. And the amount of money it costs per bed size is going to almost exponentially increase. And so we're going to get into all that slowly. I, I kind of gave it to you all at once there, but I'm going to slowly go into it and say, hey, you know, for what price, what are you going to get and what would you recommend and why? Let's start with the basics. 5.5 watt diode laser. Say this Jinmitsu, like the first I bought. Wonderful for engraving. You get a reasonably large bed size for the price. You could get one of these for like $300, $350. And it's going to do great engraving, terrible at cutting. Unless, of course, you're using, you know, like cardstock or foam or something like that. Uh, you're not going to really do well cutting wood consistently. Uh, leather consistently. I mean, I did it. I made a lot of things. I made wallets. I made all kinds of fun stuff, but it just wasn't that consistent. And overall, it just wasn't enough power to kind of run a business or, you know, really do what you want to do. So what I ended up doing is stepping up here to this Ortur Laser Master 3. Now this is a 10 watt and it's expandable. So I'm able to 
create a bigger bed. And this is one of the advantages of having a diode laser. Now, this is $699. I'm not affiliated, but $699 with $100 off, you're looking at $600. Now, so for under eight, for under $1,000, you can have a fully functioning business type of machine with an expanded bed. See, I expanded this bed for like $200 more. So I was able to, for less than $1,000, have air assist, have an 850 millimeter by 400 millimeters. So I'm able to create art. I'm able to create things that go on my wall or so many more things. And I'm able to cut decent sized wood. Now I can't do acrylic really. And uh, it still has quite a few limitations and it's very slow. So if you're trying to run this for a business and every week you're selling a bunch of stuff, well, you're just not going to be able to keep up with a diode laser. It's just too slow. So it's a great hobby business, but for an actual business, it's just not going to keep up. So what other options are there for around $600? Well, of course, you can run into what is called the K40. And a great way to go is probably like this um, monoport here. It is 40 watts and it runs light burn. Now, I'm going to re not recommend any laser that doesn't run light burn. Because if you're going to get into lasers, you might as well learn it. The advantages of being able to use, use light burn really are a game changer when it comes to making laser stuff. And also just being able to get files from anywhere and do what you want to do with them. Just figure it's like the Adobe Illustrator for lasers. Now you can see for $600, you can get into a machine like this and it's going to cut very well. It's going to cut so much better for a diode of the same price. And the K40 is kind of that thing that if it didn't exist, it would make the whole, this whole video very easy because you would just say, okay, any, anything under $2,200, you have to buy a diode laser. That's just the only choice really. But this weird thing called the K40 exists, which really kind of makes this so much more of a difficult explanation in so many ways. Because here we have something for about the same price as the 10 watt diode laser that if you're that will do acrylic, <laughs> that will cut a decent size of wood. The problem is in thickness. But the problem is, is that it only has an 8 by 12 bed. So if you're cutting any, you want to cut anything over an 8 by 12, then this isn't going to work for you. And also, the life of this CO2 can range from 400 to 2,000 hours. And then you've got to replace this tube. Now, it's only $130 to replace the tube, but... You know, you're looking at another expense. With a diode laser, you're looking at probably 8,000 hours for a diode laser at, with about the same replacement cost. So this is why it's so difficult uh, that you really have to think about what you're going to use it for of why. If you're just doing coasters and keychains and you want to do acrylic, it would really seem like the monoport or just a, a K40, that's known as the 40-watt laser like this, is called the K40. And it would just make more sense. It's probably going to have a, a better overall use case for you. You can do more things. But now you want to make a wall piece. You want to do some really massive engraving. You're just not going to be able to do that with this machine. Now, the fact is, is that for... L less than the price of a 60 watt CO2 laser, you could have one of these and have one of these. <laughs> so this is also a thought, you know, you've already, maybe you've already got a diode laser, but you want to cut acrylic and you want to do some things like that. You know, buying a K40 might actually be a better deal that you have both lasers. And they're both going to fit into a reasonably small area. And that's what we're going to get into when we talk about the next level, which would be the 60-watt CO2 laser. 
But before we get into the next level of CO2, I did want to mention there is a 20 watt uh, diode laser. There's quite a few different models of that out there, and they range around $1,200, 1000 to $1,200. And yes, you're going to get a little bit more output there as far as your wattage, more things you can cut. Still not going to work that great for acrylic. Still not going to be super consistent when it comes to cutting thicker woods. And once again, you're limited to about what mine is, about 850 millimeters by 400 millimeters, which is a pretty good size. And you can do a lot with that. But if you want to do stuff that's bigger, then you're pretty much going to be stuck there. That's about as far as you're going to go. Um, if you do have about $1,200 and you don't want to spend more than that, and you want a good capable machine, a 24, 20 watt laser is a great way to go. It's kind of that middle ground before you start getting into the really powerful lasers that I would consider if you're doing a laser business. So all of this is great to learn on, to get your feet wet. You can make a little money. You could do it part time. But once you actually start wanting to get into business with a laser, I would at least get up to a 60 watt CO2 laser. As you start getting up into the higher wattages of CO2 lasers, the actual tube time is, go is going to go up. So you're not going to be release replacing tubes that often, but when you do, they will become much more expensive. But when you go from a, say, 60 watt CO2 laser all the way up to a, say, 150 watt, the main difference that you're looking at here is not how much power. It's actually your working bed. This laser right here, this 60 watt laser, I can put a 150 watt tube in here. You see this little spot here? Let's see if we can, it'll let us zoom in. Here we go. You see this area right here uh, to the upper right hand side of the screen? You see, you see where that comes off? Now that is where your laser tube could be extended. So you literally could put a 150 watt laser into this 60 watt machine. The issue though, you're probably gonna need some more powerful components in there, sure, but it's totally doable. And I've seen it done many times. The issue you're gonna run into is how do you upgrade this bed size? So when you are starting to look for your business laser, you really need to figure out how large of materials you want to work on. I think that becomes more important than the wattage. And is it, if it wasn't more complicated, right here in the middle of this for about the same price, you've got these little guys. You've probably heard about Glowforge and things like that. Well, this is kind of like that. They range from about three to $5,000. And they're just more, they are built more for doing business. And they have all the little tips and tricks all included, you know, a lot of things you don't have to worry about yourself. So if you're not somebody who wants to really dig in and learn how to work on your CO2 laser, then you might want to look at something like this. Once again, we're talking about a small bed size, but you're going to get a camera, you're usually going to get support. One tup touch setup. There's going to be, this is something you might want to look into. I'm not going to go too far into this because it's complicated enough. But if you're somebody who just wants to push a button and get it done, be able to look on a camera, know your materials, then this might be something you want to look into. And this is actually a brand new machine from Ohmtech. So something, something kind of cool. I'm mostly showing you uh, lasers from Ohmtech and Monport. These seem to be the kind of go-tos right now for mid-level lasers CO and maybe lower-level CO2 lasers that are going to be pretty well set up and sorted. Now, you can go on to eBay and you can buy something straight from China, but you're going to have to know what you're doing. You're going to have to be able to set up your mirrors and set up your laser and do a lot of work. You know, it may come not working. So in my opinion, probably better off to go at least with a Monport or an Ohmtech. 
And as I said before, you know, I personally, this is my machine. I think I'm about a year away. But as you can see here, as you get up in price, what you're really looking at is not the wattage, although that's important, it's really the bed size. And we're gonna get all the way up here to a 40 by 64. So you're not only able to do much thicker materials and pretty much any kind of, I mean, you could throw a piece of plywood in here, you could throw a large piece of acrylic and you could make really amazing stuff, like huge signs for for businesses, you could get into doing some very expensive work. Not only that, if you want to make keychains, you can make a hundred at a time. And you can know that those hundred are going to come out great. You can print out, you know, 50 coasters and be done with it. Something that would take you an entire week on a diode laser. So this is why I'm saying if you are in business, you are going to want a CO2 laser and you're going to want one with as big a bed as you can afford. And then you can expand on the rest later. But once you make a decision about a laser of this size, it's very difficult for you to get a bigger bed size. Very difficult. But it's again, it's not as difficult to get more power or change the motherboard or you know accessories or things like that. So there's a lot of things I'm probably forgetting and I'll maybe I'll add them into another episode when it comes to this, but I just wanted to go over the basics for people of things to think about. Say you're getting into a laser and you have certain ideas that you want to do and just some things to think about. Let me know if this answered some questions for you. Just leave a comment. Let me know what I left out or what you want to know more about. Like, subscribe and all that stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.